Keeping carbs low brings all of the benefits of fasting, autophagy, low inflammation, body fat burning. Dr. Ben Bickman with Dr. Ken Berry. I compare caloric fasts to nutrient fasts where, but, but you're sort of alluding to this as well in the form of what we could also call a fat fast. I've heard Megan Ramos, who works with Jason Fung in their fasting protocol, call it that, and I think it's totally accurate. We could define a fat fast or nutrient fast as eating and drinking only substances that do not spike insulin. It has essentially the same effect on the metabolic health as pure fasting. I define a fasted or a fed state based on the effect of insulin and glucagon. Insulin is the hormone of fed state or eating and storing energy. Glucagon is the hormone of fasted state and using energy, uh, uh, not storing it, mobilizing it to be used by the body. So if we look at the fat cell, for example, or glucose that is stored in the liver, insulin is telling the tissues to pull in glucose and fat and hold on to it. And it's also telling the liver to make fat from any glucose, from any excess glucose as well and store that or send it out to be stored in the fat tissue. In contrast, glucagon is breaking down that stored glucose, that stored fat to be used by the body. So if we look at fasting or feeding in the context of insulin and glucagon, a fasted state has very low insulin, very high glucagon. A fed state has high insulin, low glucagon. And, and we can measure this ratio based on just looking at insulin and glucagon. And importantly, if someone is adhering to a ketogenic diet, which of course, as everyone knows, is a very low carb diet, they, their insulin to glucagon ratio or insulin and glucagon levels are much closer to a true fasted state when, no one's eating, when you're not eating anything than it is to a typical fed state when the feeding is based on the standard American diet, high fat, high carb. So... I, that is one of the other reasons I am an advocate of a low carb diet because it continues to provide the benefits of fasting while acknowledging that a fast always has to end. You can't fast indefinitely. Right. So don't, don't break your fast really. I mean, you put something back in your guts, but you're not, you're still keeping the body in that state of energy use and energy mobilization. Physiologically, medically speaking, there are essential fatty acids that you have to get from fats. If you don't get them, you will get sick, you will suffer, and you will eventually die if you don't get them for a long enough period of time. There are essential amino acids that are uh, that, that come from proteins. If you don't get these essential amino acids, you will get sick, you will suffer, and you will eventually die if you don't get them in your diet. But there is no essential sugar. There is no essential starch. There is no essential carbohydrate. To my knowledge, a ketogenic way of eating in my in my way of thinking is a fasting mimicking diet. If you're doing it uh, at, at a low enough carbohydrate intake level, it mimics fasting. All of the benefits of fasting, including the autophagy, including the reduction yep. in inflammation, and inc including the increase in fat burning, you get all of that with a ketogenic way of eating without just fasting. Yep. Well said, I agree wholeheartedly. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points. We can compare a caloric fast to a nutrient fast. A fat fast is the same as a nutrient fast, according to Megan Ramos, who works with Dr. Jason Fung. We could define a fat fast or nutrient fast as eating and drinking only substances that do not spike insulin. It has essentially the same effect on the metabolic health as pure fasting. Dr. Bickman, we can define fed versus fasted state based on the effects on insulin and glucagon. Insulin is the hormone of storing energy Glucagon is the hormone of mobilizing energy, not storing it. Considering the fat cell in the liver, insulin is telling these tissues, pull in glucose and hold on to it. It's telling the liver to make fat from glucose and store it, or send it out to the fat cells for storage. Glucagon breaks down the stored glucose to be used by the body. The fasted state has very low insulin, very high glucagon. The fed state has very high insulin, very low glucagon. 
if on a keto diet, very low carb, insulin to glucagon ratio is much closer to a fasted state. Dr. Bickman says, one reason I advocate for a low carb diet, it provides the benefits of fasting. When you break your fast, try to keep your glucagon high so the body still burns energy instead of storing it. Dr. Berry, there are essential fatty acids that you must get from fat. There are essential amino acids that only come from protein. Without these, you will get sick and eventually die. There is, however, no essential sugar or starch or any type of carb. Ketogenic eating is like fasting. It has all the benefits of fasting if the carbs are low enough, including autophagy, reduction of inflammation, increase in fat burning.